106. What's up? Get him on a ring. Yeah. No. Yeah. Capo three. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living. Whatever men may say, I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice and cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along my narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. Though my heart goes weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the storm and glass. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along my narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, and up your voice and sing. To Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. And there is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along my narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. Stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we sing Everyone sing the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. Together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. And it's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. Rising up all around, it's the anthem of the Lord's renown. And together we sing, everyone sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty, the earth is filled. Glory, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is 
is filled with his glory and holy is the lord god almighty the earth is filled with his glory holy is the lord god almighty the earth is filled with his glory the earth is filled with How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the light. Then through the dark, your loving kindness tore through the shadow of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine? So great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence. Christ, my living hope. 
Cause you have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Amen. Cause in this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear. Cause there is only one foundation. We believe, we believe. In this broken generation, when all is dark, you help us see that there is only one salvation. We believe, we believe, we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And He's coming back again. We believe. So let our faith be more than anthem, greater than the song we sing. In our weakness and temptation, we believe, we believe, we believe in God the Father. God Father, we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that He conquered death, we believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. We believe. We believe. Lord God, we just thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can come in here and we can lift our voices to you, Father God. And Lord, we thank you, Father, that you don't care how we sound. We don't care. You know that the voice that you gave us, Father, you're just glad that we are in, your, in here and praising you this morning, Lord God. Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we love you, Lord, for all of the blessings you give us. We thank you, Father for this church family. We thank you, Lord. And we ask for healing for all of those that are dealing with sickness, Father. We know we have a lot of people out at work. We have a lot of people out of church. We've got a lot of people out of school. And Lord, we just pray, Father. Lord, we pray for your healing. we we'll take over in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Huh? Oh, there we go. Hey, good morning. <laughs> How's everyone's going on? They got me squared away up there. So wonderful ministry. Hey, um, well, I'm, I am back from Mexico. Um, we didn't get quarantined. It was the first test that I ever failed that I was really, really sad about. <laughs> I guess I was always sad about. Anyways, anyways, moving on. Uh, no, uh, uh, we are back. Uh, we had actually a pretty great time. So um, I heard, um, I did hear the very beginning of the message from Darren on Wednesday that was talking about the board was going to start regulating my time off or something like that. Um, well, we're, we're going to have a long discussion about that, but nevertheless, uh, <laughs> no, it was, it was uh, great. I got to hear a little bit of Darren's message. Um, I do want to say Darren always makes fun of me and he didn't know I was going to say this, but he always makes fun of me about how, how long I go on Bible studies. I want to point out that he went like 53 minutes, uh, on his Bible study. So yeah, no more making fun of me. He can make fun of me. There's a lot of other stuff he can make fun of me, but at least that one he's done making fun of me on, mister. <laughs> but we have a, a, a great opportunity, and I, I wish I could have take the time to really dive into what kind of all took place here um, to get us to this point where we're having a guest speaker today. But um, it kind of just all worked out, and I know Darren kind of spoke about it on Wednesday a little bit, and... Um, but uh, we have this great opportunity here from hearing from somebody uh, that is kind of coming from the outside, but it still is part of the assembly of God, but coming from the outside and kind of coming in and speaking the word of God to us, to us as a church. And I believe there's a message here for us as a church. Um, and, and, and meaning by is this all kind of took place through the Holy Spirit. And so I believe that there's something powerful that is about ready to happen. Now, I'm not to put too much on your shoulders there, TJ. <laughs> but I believe there's a reason for everything, and I know that there's a reason for this on how it all took place. So um, I do want to introduce uh, a, a good friend, and uh, I is actually kind of wonderful. We spent the full, I was going to give him some time to, to prepare this morning, and uh, what happened, uh, I started talking to him and we kind of started talking and it, it kind of reminded me of the old days with Brandon where we had a lot planned to do, but nothing got done that morning this morning. So it was a great opportunity. So I would do want to welcome TJ up here to the pulpit. And you, am I on? Yep. Okay, right on. I got to meet Tia earlier, so I made a new friend. Good to meet you. Um, so again, TJ here, and uh, Darren has been my best buddy for the last 30 years of our lives, and he is certainly one of the greatest gifts on this planet God has ever given to me. I absolutely love that guy. And then I've had an opportunity to get familiar with um, Clayton just these last year or so or whatever it's been. And so, um, and what a privilege, because it's one thing to have someone that just wants to speak and say something and pastor church, be a leader. You guys know how it is. And there's another thing when you have someone that wants to be led by the spirit and give the best, uh, not that they can bring, but what the Lord can bring through them. And I've, I've picked that up off of him as he um, desires to lead in that way. And um, I have not had the opportunity to meet Pastor Bob yet, but... Um, Darren first described him to me as the man, and I tried to multiple times tell him that only Jesus is the man, but uh, I took that to mean he really appreciated Pastor Bob, so yeah, I'm sure I'll get a chance to meet him at some point, but that was how he first described it. Oh yeah, Bob's the man, that's what he said. I was like, all right, man, <laughs> whatever. So, um, But I am going to, uh, you know, it was interesting, Darren and I have been talking about some different scriptures um, recently. And so when this came about where I ended up, Darren wasn't supposed to be here this Sunday for work, and Pastor Clayton was supposed to be out of town for Mexico, best we knew, and then uh, this opportunity came where I ended up being the person that's getting to, to share from the Lord today, and then they're both sitting right here, you know, um, interestingly enough. Um, but the Lord actually brought those same scriptures that Darren and I had been talking about up 
on, uh, on my heart to share with you guys. And so I know you guys aren't familiar with me any of that. To me, um, it doesn't make any difference because you're not here to see a speaker. You're here for Jesus and to get the Spirit to be ministered to. So as long as the Spirit's doing His part, you know, you can put whoever up here, you know what I mean? And so we're going to look for the Lord to do that. So um, can we bring up the first couple of scriptures or do you guys have this? Uh, I'm getting familiar with this. So I, this has been entitled, this message is doing the impossible, don't worry about it. Doing the impossible, subcategory, don't worry about it. Because there's a lot of people who would think, don't worry that's impossible, right? Um, Jesus walking on the water and things like that. We think of that being the impossible or all these different miracles he did or you healing blind eyes and things like that's impossible. To be honest with you, more down to earth, we don't normally have to deal with trying to heal someone's blind eyes. Well, you're, you know, we deal with is being attacked by anxiety, worry, problems, things like that. So we're going to talk about doing that kind of impossible thing. So these scripture verses are very familiar with you. I'm sure these are what Darren and I've been talking about. Uh, Cast all your anxiety on him, being God, because he cares for you, 1 Peter 5, 7. I uh, looked up the word, what does anxiety mean? I like to break these things down. And anxiousness simply, it can mean lots of things, but what I took away from looking it up was that anxiousness was thinking about something over and over and over again with a negative expectation or, you know, or some kind of fear of negativity. It's, a, it's a basically a fear. It's fear. That's a form of fear. Anxiety. Thinking about it over and over. And he says, cast those on you or on the Lord because he cares for you. Uh, somebody say me. me. Yeah. Say it again. Me. me. Okay. Jesus cares for you. <laughs> Specifically you. It's pretty good. Um, let's Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, do not be anxious. There's anxiety. Uh, again, you could substitute the word fearful. Do not be fearful about anything, but in every situation, someone say every, every, every situation, which means you don't have a situation going on and I don't have a situation going on that this does not apply to. Okay. So in every situation by prayer and petition, two different things with thanksgiving, so that's always important to have that in there. Present your request to God, and the peace of God, which trans transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, I always have liked that. I'm like, yeah, he's going to guard my heart and my mind. That's what I'm talking about. But did you notice that we have a part there, too? We have a very big part. It's a very if then scenario. Pastor, we were just talking about this. It's an if then scenario. If you'll do this, then God will do what you can't do. He will guard your heart and mind with peace. But we have a, we have a part to play too. So we're going to break these things down today. This is what we're going to be talking mainly about. Okay? I have an illustration I'm going to use to kind of help you. And this is I felt like the Lord presses upon my heart. Never done this before. We're going to do it. So let's imagine that you are a believer and you're, you have a car detailing business, or in this case, we're going to say a motorcycle detailing business. That's what you mainly do, okay? And, um, and I'm sure you can relate to this. I know some of you guys looked over at uh, Mr. Larry. I think I've only got to meet you once, but I think you're like the resident motorcycle dude. Is that right? The official title? Making sure. Darren, t Darren keeps me posted all this stuff, so I probably know more about you than you think you do, you know? He's got a big heart, and he cares, and so he talks about it. Um, so let's imagine that we, you know, you or myself, we're, we're a believer. We have a car detailing or a motorcycle detailing business, and God led us into it. So you know, when God leads you into something, you're like, oh, this is gonna, it's gonna succeed. This is gonna be amazing, you know? It's gonna be no problems. Uh, <laughs> about that. So now here's the thing. You, as you start this car detailing business, it starts off doing really well. It's a great season for it, and you're getting tons of business. And you think to yourself, now that's very key what I just said, you think to yourself. Okay, this is, this is, this is bad. When someone says that, you should be like, oh, that's where you're about to mess up. Okay? You think to yourself, you know, this is doing pretty well. What I need is a big truck. That will, you know, car detailing business, I can put the little sign on the back, and I want people to know that it's a good, legitimate business. You go finance yourself a truck so you look legit, okay? The problem is, this is a new business for you, and you don't realize it's going to hit a slow season, and now that money you're making isn't coming in like it used to be doing. Anyone ever been there, you know? 
And so what happens is you have a $500 payment per month on this truck, and you're now three months behind, $1,500 behind, and you get a note saying you have to get this bill paid in two weeks or we're coming and taking your fancy truck back. So that's not good. But you know what? The good news is your, your foundation is in Christ. You've learned, you've been in the church, you learn, you know, God will help me. And so I'll tell you what, you are in a bad spot. Now, this is where I'm going to get a little help from my man, Austin. Austin, bring up the blanket. Oh, the blanket. Now, this blanket represents anxiety, fear, concern. And uh, so you get this news, you get this letter. There it is in black and white. If you don't pay this bill in two weeks, we're taking your truck. And so this is what happens. Throw it on me, man. You'll never make the money. Oh, Fear, anxiety gets thrown on you. Ever been here? It's just weighing on you. And you're like, oh, this is, that's how it talks. You're never going to have the, you're not going to have the money. Your car is going to be taken. And if your car is taken, you can't work. And then your finances are going to be a wreck. And then you'll, pro you'll probably be homeless. And no one will like you. All of these things. It's just on you. And you're like, oh, and it's just weighing on you. You ever, you know what I'm talking about? And so you, but here's the thing. You realize I'm in a bad spot. So you go to God because you know, you've heard, God is the answer. Amen? That you, that's an easy amen, man. You ever want an amen? Just God is the answer. Now, do we have any idea how to apply that? Maybe not. But you know, we're like, God is the answer. In the meantime, you're like, but I'm not going to have the money. It's just weighing on you. But I have this problem. I have this issue. And so you go to God and um, you do the first thing. Here's the first thing you should do in a situation like this. Confess your sins. 1 John 1, 9. I don't, I don't think I've asked you guys to put that up there, but that's a big one for me. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. That's huge. You need that. And what's the second part? Cleanse you of all unrighteousness. This is not right. This is not righteousness. You shouldn't be living in fear. You shouldn't be behind on the bills. That's not what God wants. It's not right in his eyes. Let me put it this way. You want to know what righteousness is? Look at heaven. That's what God wants. You see, everything's in line the way it should be. Ain't nobody trying to make tr truck payments in heaven. You get me? They're not worried about anything in heaven. Does this make sense? That's the, and so this isn't righteousness. Worry, fear, being behind. This isn't right. So he says he would cleanse you from all unrighteousness if then scenario. If you will confess your sins, then he will help cleanse you. So you go, Lord, you know how this is. I shouldn't have bought this truck. <laughs> okay. I got a little too, too big for my britches. And you didn't tell me to buy this truck, but now I'm in a bad spot and I need rescuing. All this fear is on me, all this concern. I need help. And so what happens is you set the prayer, you said the prayer, and now you're going to start looking to God. Now you have two weeks. So this happens on a Monday, Tuesday, you're, you're just going through your Bible and you're reading and you read Luke 6, 38. And uh, if you could put that up and it stands out to you, you're just reading your Bible. You ever been just reading the Bible? I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. That's all right. You don't have a plan yet, but you're reading and you read and you're and among all the things you're reading in Luke. This one stands out to you. Give, and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For your standard of measure, it will be, or by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. Now, you have a whole Bible in front of you. Why did that one verse stand out? Hmm, good thing you're reading your Bible. Huh? So you go, man, you know, that sounds good. And you start getting a little hope, and it starts to take the fear off of you. And you're like, you know what? It does say that. Yeah, that's a good verse. And something's ministering to you about it. You, you follow me? You're like, all right, I'm feeling a lot better. And so you recognize that's the leading of the Holy Spirit. So that's Tuesday. But Wednesday, you know how this is. You wake up and, oh, that bill's still sitting there on the table, right? And uh, what happens? Hit me again. You're like, oh, I don't, don't have the money. Oh, <laughs> oh, I don't have the money. How is this going to work? I'm not making, so you start doing what you know to do. You start thinking, catch that? 
You start thinking, you start thinking, you're going to come up with some ideas. Okay, you guys familiar with Abraham and uh, Sarah? That's how you end up with an Ishmael. <laughs> you start thinking, how we, how we, oh, I know how we could work this out. Hey, honey, I have an idea. You might as well just go, dun, 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 right? I have an idea. Okay. So you're like, I'm going to start reaching out to people I used to have as customers. I'm going to work my way. I'm going to work real hard. I'm going to get this fixed. You have an idea. And you're going to, and you're like, because I just, I got to get this money. I got to get this money. You fear, worries on you. I got to get this money. I got to, you are money minded, aren't you? You're not thinking about God. You're not thinking about Luke 6:38. You're, you're just, you're about, I got to get this money. And I, if you can't tell, I'm preaching this because I've been here more than four or five or 10 times in my life. Okay. And so I learned through the, the hard knocks way. Lord taught me these things. And so, but you sit down maybe that night before you go to bed or whenever you're going to do some reading and you know, you read Luke 6 38, you put it in front of you again and you start feeling a little better. You're like, you know, it's, I just, something about this scripture. I, I feel a lot better. So that's Wednesday. Thursday comes along. You don't have the money. Friday comes along. You don't have the money, but you get something in your heart. And uh, it's like this. It sounds like this. It goes, give $100 to, we'll use Austin, to Austin to give to the youth group. Not for Austin, but for the youth group. And you're like, I rebuke you, Satan. That's the worst idea I have ever heard in my life. I need to get some money together, you know? And, uh, and you hear it again. Give, a, give $100 to Austin for that youth group. That is bizarre. So that's this Friday. I'll throw it on me again. And you, you're like, no one's calling you back. The jobs aren't going. Nothing's turning out the way you want, to, want it to. And you're like, Lord, I have given. Pressed down, shaken together. I don't see this running over. I don't see this abundance. Why is this not working? If, then scenarios. God's promises are very often if, then scenarios, right? Old Testament, if you will obey me, blah, 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 these good things. If you don't obey me, you better get ready for the thunder. You know what I mean? Because it's coming. Boom, 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 boom. If you do it, then. Most times for me growing up in church, like I said, we were in church. I was born in the church, I'm pretty sure. I think maybe they got me out of the hospital, but pretty much I was in the church until, you know, the nursery. And it was remarkably much like this church we grew up in. Anyway, um, and I always grew up just looking at the promises. I wasn't thinking about my part. I just like, it says this. It says you're supposed to be a God that does this, a God that does this, God that does this. And he's like, I am a God that does that if you'll listen. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, no big deal. I don't know, it probably just me no one's been there. So anyway, so you're Friday, you're feeling it, man. You got the worry on you. The worry blanket's got you. The worry blanket, right? And it's just weighing you down. Saturday's coming. And all you're thinking about is, oh, this hundred dollars to Austin youth group. But then finally Sunday, Saturday night comes and you go, you know what? I'm going to do it. I have barely no money. I don't know how I'm going to afford to do this, but I'm going to do it. And so you go ahead and Sunday morning comes and you're, uh, you, you see Austin, you say, Hey man, come here real quick. Now what you don't know behind the scenes is happening is this is in real life, but Clayton is a part of the Big On Christ Bikers Club. Oh yeah, the BOC, okay? Now they don't go to bars and, you know, things like that. They'll probably hit a, a Denny's real hard though, you know what I mean? Maybe an IHOP, yeah, the BOC, okay? Rumbling in, bringing the thunder. And uh, they went out on an excursion, and all of him and his gang of, of uh, people that are big on Christ with their bikes. And their bikes are all dirty, and they need someone to detail, but you don't know any of this. Oh, you're, you're over here thinking, how is this going to work out, blah, 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 blah. But you know what? You make it up in your heart and your mind. You're going to do what the Lord has put on your heart. It makes no sense, as usual, with the Lord. You know, march around the walls until they fall down. <laughs> Can we talk about that for a moment? You know, <laughs> go to the Red Sea. It'll be great. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> I mean, you think about God's plans, you know what I mean? It, they never make any sense at all. Give $100 Austin and youth group makes us just a little sense. You need money. You're supposed to be giving money away. Okay. And so you go, you know what? I'm going to do it. So Sunday you say, hey, man, come here real quick. I got something for you. I need you to do something. I need you to give this to the youth group. So you give them 100 bucks. There you go. Yes, and give that to the youth group. 
okay? And so you give it to him, and what happens is he takes it, you, that's all you know, you give him 100 bucks. I don't know who's in charge of the youth group, you can get that from him later. But here's the thing, you have obeyed God, and something inside of you, something inside of you just, oh, it's worse than I thought. Ah, oh, okay. Isn't that the way fear works? It clings to you, doesn't it? Yeah. I told Austin, I, that was the, uh, you can take that, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I told Austin I was glad to use that blanket because it clings to you, and that's the way fear is. It clings to you. And this is what happens. You cast your cares on the Lord. No, God's got it. You feel good, don't you? Yeah, and you know what happens. It comes right on back, right, and tries to jump right back on you. You're like, no, no, I'm a believer. You get in the church service, you walk out, you're feeling good. I'll tell you what, you know, Mr. Larry has crushed the hymnal song that day. So good, you know, right out of the hymn. He, whoo, really put it out there. You're feeling good, and so on. And, uh, but guess what? It comes back. And so now that I've obeyed the Lord, I've done my part, suddenly his peace comes in. I've not made one dollar more. I don't have an extra deal. All I know is I gave a hundred dollars to you to Austin, but something that doesn't make sense. Um, can we go back to that verse, the peace that surpasses understanding, uh, the, those first two verses? Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Here we go. What's kicking in is the second part of this bottom verse. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. It doesn't make sense. You haven't made any money. Why are you at peace? Why is there peace there? Because you've obeyed. And now God's doing something that's supernatural, the impossible, and you're at peace, but your circumstances have not changed. Then what happens is you go to church Sunday night. And... Clayton, Pastor Clayton, finds out that you did this with Austin, and he knows you have a business, a detailed business, but it wouldn't even cross his mind to think about you. But that Sunday evening, he comes to you and says, hey, I heard that you gave uh, $100 to the youth group through Austin. He told me about that. And you're like, yeah, it's something the Lord told me to do. And he says, I really appreciate that. He says, so I want you to do this. I have a bike. I need you to detail and uh, how much would you charge when you're like, I'd charge you a hundred bucks. You know, you're my pastor. I love you. And so I'm gonna charge you a hundred bucks. I usually charge something more. He says, that's great. He says, I also have another 14 guys in my crew. So there's 15 of us. And when I've talked to them, they want you to detail their bikes this week too. So a hundred dollars times 15 people is $1,500. So you can start to work on Monday because you have to put in your own work, right? Joshua and the, the children of Israel, they still had to march around the walls. They still had to put in effort, didn't they? And so you go in and you start executing what you do know how to do in the natural. And you do three bikes on Monday, three down, $300. You do three bikes on Tuesday. You do three bikes on Wednesday. You do three bikes on Thursday. And come Friday when the bill is due, you do the last three bikes. You got $1,500 in your hand and God has provided for your need. Does that make sense? So that is the way that the Lord, if you look through the word of God, that's the way he operates. He gives us what to do. And when we do it, he can cause it to be successful. It's not so much that we just pray, hit our knees and say, please help me. You heard me pray that prayer yesterday and the day before and the day before. You know, the Lord told me one time, um, he told me a few things about prayer. Number one, he said, I'm not hard of hearing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. You made the ear. That makes sense. You would not be hard. He said, uh, I remember what you said last time. <laughs> I was like, you probably have a great memory. That makes sense. The third thing he said is, I love you. I said, okay, that helps. And, and then he said, um, and I see your heart. Those three things. He said, I'm not hard of hearing. I remember what you said last time. I love you. And he sees your heart like he's working on it. And so that gave me a lot of peace because I just kept begging. But did you notice this scenario in this case took two weeks to get done? Sometimes it just takes time. It just, some things just take time. I don't care. Listen, you're, are you in the family of faith? Yes or no? If you're in the family of God, you might as well get used to waiting. You know, I know that. I remember the Lord impressed this upon me. He said, we're a family of waiting. Jesus is waiting, right? He's, he's coming back. You read Revelation? to get a glorious church? How long has that been the process? He's still waiting. He said the son didn't know the hour. Only the father knew the hour that he was going to return. Jesus is waiting on the father. 
And if, he, if Jesus is waiting, you're going to wait. <laughs> and I'm going to wait. Jesus, some, some of you guys are single, right? And, uh, and whatever the case is. But here's the thing. The church is described as the bridegroom of Christ, his bride. Jesus is waiting on his bride. We are a family of waiting. I know you don't like to hear that. I know you like instant coffee. I know you like instant microwaves. I know you like fast foods. I get it. But if you condition yourself to be a person that needs everything immediately, you're going to be very, very frustrated in the kingdom of God. Because it doesn't matter who you are, there's going to be waiting involved. Okay? So now I'm going to get into a, a few other uh, scriptures. But I did want to point out to you that that $100 multiplied into $1,500. And it was based on obedience. And that, what the Lord impressed upon me, what that reminded me of in the scripture is the five loaves and the two fish, right? The the young man gave five loaves and two fish to Jesus. It was his lunch. And there was 5,000 people that needed to be fed. And he took what was and he multiplied it to a bunch of people and took care of their need. That is what the Lord will do with what you will bring to him. It's not enough initially. But if if you take what's not enough and you add obedience to it, then it becomes enough. Does that make sense? And so one of the things you, ha- you, sh- you would want to know, I think, is, Lord, what is my part? That's one of the reasons it's important to be digging into, your, into the Word every day. Now, I'm not big on Bible reading. I'm not really big on that. But I am very big on communicating daily with, the God, with God through the Word, through my Bible. It's different. You see a Bible. When I see a Bible, I see a cell phone. Why? I can pick it up and call God. Let's talk. Does that make sense? If your Bible is just scriptures, like let's do my Bible reading. You ever heard of Pharisees? Do they, did they know the Bible? They spent a lot of time in the scriptures. What did Jesus have to say about the Pharisees? At, some, at points, now these are people that know the scriptures, yes or no? He called them the sons of the devil. Okay, so if you think reading the Bible a bunch is going to make you sanctified and wonderful, not according to Jesus. But if you get your Bible out and you spend time with your Savior day in and day out, with that word in front of you, then he can communicate to you Luke 6.38. You know, given, it'll be given to you. He can communicate to you what you need for that day, for that week. Moreover, he can communicate to you things that are coming up that haven't happened yet and get you prepared for them. A lot of times we're blindsided because we're not paying attention to what the Lord is trying to say. He's trying to prepare us, so then we have to react to what happens to us. But he wants you to have an open relationship with him, okay? So let me uh, get into a few other scriptures, and we'll see um, where we go from there, because I don't want to be up here for too long, that's for sure, okay? Now, I will tell you this. The more victories you have like that, oh, this was really big. I was going to say using this analogy. You understand that once Clayton and the the guys' bikes are clean, you only made the $1,500 you needed for the bill. But those guys in this scenario, let's say they keep coming back to you over and over for years. Let's say they start referring people to you. Do you see how your $100 has multiplied into thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars? Because God, last I check, he doesn't give you tit for tat. You did this, I'm going to give you this. Last I check, it was pressed down, shaken together, and running over. That's the way God thinks. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. When the kid gave the five loaves and two two fish to Jesus, Jesus, yes, it multiplied to the people, but what happened after that? Twelve baskets full of food. Pressed down, what's the next... Shaken together, running over. Shall men give, it says, into your bosom. I looked that word up. Bosom means pockets. Men will give into your pockets. In this case, the BOC. Big on Christ. Bikers Club, right? We're giving to your pockets. And so I'm just trying to give you an illustrated example from the Bible, five loaves, two fish, in real life, because I think so often we hear these things in these stories, and I, at least for me growing up, and I heard them, I knew them, I could quote them, but I didn't know how to apply them into my own life, so I didn't get the access to it. Does that make sense? Okay, so 
Jesus. I love talking about Jesus. And one thing we know about life is life is cyclical. Troubles are cyclical, which what I mean by that is you're either in a challenge right now, you're coming out of a challenge right now, you're enjoying maybe a period of rest, but then you're going to head back into a challenge. Now, I know people are like, I don't want that to be my life. Look back on your life. It's been your life. You know what I mean? Now, Jesus was perfect. Did he have troubles? Oh, yeah. And if Jesus had troubles, that probably means you, question mark, are going to have troubles. Last I checked, Jesus said, in the world you will have troubles, but I leave you my peace. What's his peace? An answer. There's no peace without answers. If you don't have an answer, you don't have peace. Now, I will tell you this. The goal, I was, I was going to say, our goal, a lot of times, I think we don't really know this, but I, I think a lot of times people's goals, in their mind, they think they're going to get to a place, they're just trying to get to a place where they can rest and there's no trouble, right? Isn't that what they're trying to kind of work toward? There's a place like that, it's called heaven, okay? <laughs> but uh, we live on planet Earth, okay? And so because of that, our goal should not be to get to a place where we get peace forever on this planet. Our goal should be like Jesus in the storm where we have peace even if it's stormy. He's sleeping. That's called peace in the storm. And as long as you can have peace in the storm or outside the storm, you're always going to be good. You make sense? Okay. All right. I'm uh, going to give you three reasons why Jesus had peace, and we're going to leave it at that. Jesus, so I wrote on here, Jesus was consistent in every circumstance. Someone please say, every circumstance. Okay, I love doing stuff as a group. One more time. Someone say, every circumstance. Jesus had peace in every circumstance. You see him consistent on the raging sea when he's walking on the water. On the donkey of the triumphal entry, they're like, yeah, Jesus! And he's still cool hand Luke, man. He's just doing his thing. He's not like, yeah, bring it on. He's just steady. You know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, before he goes to the cross, when he's distraught, he's still looking at the Father. At the whipping post on the cross, you see the same Jesus. After his resurrection, he was the same. He wasn't always emotionally the same. I want to make sure that's clear. Because in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was feeling some emotions. He's sweating blood in his distress. But he's not like, woe is me, because that's a lot of times people justify that, you know, like, well, look, he wasn't, he was saying, he was looking at the father and saying, father, if this is possible for this to be taken away from me, because my flesh doesn't want to do it, please take it away from me. But not what I want, what you want. He knew what to do with his, with the, the fear, when the, when the fears and anxieties try to get thrown on him, he threw them off by saying, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you, and eventually you see a very different Jesus in terms of his demeanor when Judas shows up with the crowd of people to come and arrest him. He's very poised, but he wasn't just a little bit before. Why? He got an answer. He knew, and I'm going to give you this, and so this is gonna, I'm going to hit you these three points, and we're going to call it a good. Number one, Jesus realized that his struggle was not against the physical things of the world, but against the mental and spiritual things of the world. And therefore, they could take hold of him on the outside, like the storm, but they couldn't take a hold of him on the inside. He knew what his real enemy was. It's not the flesh and blood. And you can see that in Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. Um, and you can also see it in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. You'll have to take the time to read them yourself because I don't have the time to go through them. Number two thing, reason Jesus was consistent is because he spent so much time with just the Father. Just, to go, what, just God. Like, if you look at the time most of us will spend in entertainment, whatever their entertainment is, versus how much time we spend with just Jesus, which one's bigger? Now, if you are, quote, what you eat, they say, if you are 80% your friends talking to you, hanging out, associating, entertainment, you kick it, you know, hanging out with the fellas, the good old boys, if that's 80% of what you do and you put 20% of the word in, how do you think your faith is going to work out? You, you or me both. We're not going to be spiritual giants. We're going to get beat up a lot. The final one, three, Jesus acted upon his words. By the way, I don't know if I gave you a scripture for that last one. Luke 5 through 15, 
uh, Luke 5, 15 through 16, um, talks about that, how Jesus would withdraw very often to spend time in prayer. Finally, Jesus acted upon his words and directions by the Holy Spirit, and therefore Jesus saw the result. If you'll put up John 5, 19, this is going to be what I think we're going to end with. Most people, when I was growing up, Jesus was like Superman. He could fly around. He could do anything. Anything, anything, anytime, any way, anything he wanted. In my mind, he saw you were sick. Bow, you know, you're healed. Bow, I just walked through, you know, run through the tunnel, head and hands, did it, and everyone got healed. Jesus would do whatever he wanted. That's not true. Jesus said, Therefore, Jesus answered, saying to them, the people, truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do what? Nothing of himself, unless it's something he sees the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, these things the Son also does in like manner. It was repeated, that same concept in John 5, 30. Jesus didn't run around doing whatever he wanted. Jesus heard from the Father, and then he did what the Father said. That's why Jesus always got results. In our analogy, this person, you, the car detailer, you heard from the Father, give $100 to Austin. You did the $100 to Austin, and then you got results. If Jesus just didn't make up, just grab an arbitrary verse and do whatever he wants, it's not wise for us to just grab an, a random verse and try to do it. Well, this says this. I'm just going to go act on it. You know why that's a bad idea? Because that's what Satan attempted Jesus, tempted Jesus to do in the wilderness. He said, here's a verse. Jump off this temple because the word says, here's a promise, right? The word says that he'll, he'll command his angels to bear you up. So if the word says it, you can do it. And Jesus who is connected with the Father, is like, that's not what I'm getting. What I'm getting is don't test the Lord your God. Yes. Yes. This is what I'm getting. It's not any scripture will do for your situation. It's what is the Lord impressing on your heart. And if you'll take what he's impressing on your heart and you act on it, you will do the miraculous. And when you get the answers from God, his peace will be on you and you don't have to worry. That is the answer to not worrying. So I'm, a, I'm done. I'm going to bring up Pastor Barth and let him uh, close this out. So. Oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> My, oh, yes, there we go. <laughs> Love you, man. Thanks. Wow, I don't, I don't really know how to top that. Um, I have no analogy. I have no nothing for you other than this. That was a powerful message. And I love what he had to say. Yes, yeah. Because I think we, we get stuck in our own routine of doing things. And, and I think today is a great opportunity for us to look at our lives and go, okay, God, what, what do you have in, star, you know, in store for us? What, what do we need to focus on? What do we need to do? And... I think that's, it's just a great opportunity for us to just evaluate. Um, and you guys, I, I just, um, if you took notes, take them home, pray about it. If you, if you missed something today, rewatch it. Um, I, I, I don't want you to leave today without that connection of what the Father is doing for your life. Guys, I, I, it doesn't matter what stage you are. Doesn't, don't, you know, if you think that you're, well, I'm, I'm good, are you? Are you? Well, I, I don't really need as much. I, are, are you in that right spot? You know, and I, I love what TJ had to say, you know, that this piece. We, we want that spot a peace, right? We want to, I want my life to just be at that spot of peacefulness and I don't have to, uh, I, I don't have to feel anything or do anything anymore. I just want that, that peace. And, and interesting is, is which you might not have known, but that connected to last Sunday's service is that, is that peace is something that is brought with Christ, with our heavenly father, nothing that we can produce. And that is such a beautiful job. Thank you, my friend, for, for being up here and giving the word that God has put upon your heart. Um, and, I, and, I, and I thank TJ for that. And guys, I just want to let us just pray.
and in this wonderful moment. Father, I just thank you. I thank you for TJ and what you put upon his heart. And then that he came up here and beautifully illustrated and, and gave to us what fear and anxiety do to us, Father. Father, if you just <laughs> sit there and obey and listen, read your word, connect. Father, what I, I, I my own self, I, I think about the things that I have done when I try to do studying or if I read a proverb a day and I just reading, not, not necessarily grasping a hold of my heart, you know, just, it's not taking so much in. It's not the communication. It's just, oh, I'm reading my scripture. I feel like I'm doing a good thing. I'm doing my job, my part I'm supposed to do. But it, just hearing what you have put upon TJ's heart about even to myself, Father, that that's my lifeline. That's my cell phone to you. That's my, my connection to you. It's a wonderful reminder. That's what it is all about. It's just not reading scriptures, but it's having this communication. The word that is written upon our heart, it's, it's just being fulfilled. It's being put inside of us. Not to be worried about what is around us, but to be focused on you. Father, I thank you for that. Thank you for that message. Father, we just, we're here today. We're with you today, Father, and we just, we just thank you for what you are doing in our lives. Father, we thank you for what you are putting upon our heart, Father. Father, we know that, uh, that you have so much more in store for our lives. That because you have given us a breath that you, to breathe, that, Father, you have something so much more, something that we just can't see. We can't comprehend. We don't have the full story yet, but you do. So, Father, I'm eternally grateful for that, which you know what you have in store for us. <laughs> so, Father, I just, I just thank you. Father, I lift up your name. And, Father, as we as a body of believers are together, Father, just uh, we lift up your name, and we thank you for what you are doing. We thank you for the things that we just don't see right now in our life, Father. We thank you for the things that we missed in our past, Father. We thank you for the things that we missed in our past. And, Father, I thank you for the things that are to come. Father, I just can't wait to see what you're going to do with us. Father, we love you. We thank you. And in Jesus' precious name, amen. Guys, have a wonderful rest of the week. If you're coming tonight, please join us tonight. If we don't see you tonight, we'll definitely see you Wednesday or next Sunday. God bless you. Love you. Have a wonderful week.